Hi there, my name's Liv. Yes, I know it's been about three months since I posted a video. I've been very busy doing things for businessy things. Very, very busy. For this video, I was requested by my sister to make a painting for her boyfriend for his birthday. He's really into Miss Vicky's chip, so this is what she decided. It was not my choice. I thought I would film some parts of the process for you guys. So you'll get to watch me make a quick little sketch of the painting and then also do some painting with a little bit of voiceover. When it comes to the initial rough sketch of the painting, I like to put in as much detail as I possibly can, especially the outlines for any sort of shadows or highlights. Because for me, the way that I paint is I usually paint over all of this line work with a consistent color. And I find whenever I do this, I make the paint kind of thin so you can still see the pencil marks underneath, which for me is very helpful. So I get all the details in the right spots. In terms of colors for this piece, for the top part of the bag, I used a lot of Naples yellow, white, and then also a little bit of yellow ochre. For the main part of the bag with the red, I used a lot of cadmium red, and then I also used a little bit of crimson red for the darker parts. I also used some magenta for the more purpley looking shadow parts. The chips are very similar in color to the top of the bag, but they have a lot more bright yellows. And then I also end up using some greens and grays for the shadows. I also use some grays for the detail on the top of the bag with the little barn behind the logo. And then we also use uh, various amounts of brown for the little salt bowl beside the chips. For the reference photo of the bag itself, I couldn't find any actual bags of Miss Vicky's chips in stores to take a photo of. And I also couldn't find any good photos of them online. All the photos I found were just sort of the graphic for the bag itself, but not on a bag in a photograph. So what I did instead is I went into Photoshop. I found an actual photo of a bag of chips. I think it was like Lay's original. And I put the Miss Vicky's bag over top of that bag in a separate layer and used the warp tool to drag the edges to kind of match the shape of the Lay's bag. And then I also was able to make sure that the shadows were accurate with the one in the photo from the Lay's bag. And if there's anything I would recommend to new painters or even just painters and artists in general is to really have a solid reference photo. For me, I don't trace off of my reference photos. I just draw while looking at them. But even if you have a strong grasp of proportion, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're also really good at value and light and shadows of paintings. So having a really solid reference can help out with that a lot because one of the two main ways that a lot of artists go wrong with more realistic pieces is either proportions are off, so they are not the best at drawing and might want to practice tracing and working on proportion. Or the other thing is difficulty with shadow and highlights and value in general. Um, a lot of faces, I'll see a lot of portrait, will be very flat. They'll have absolutely or almost no shadow on them and it causes them to be very cartoony and amateurish. So having that solid reference and being able to access it easily is very important. Doing the little red ribbon detailing on the top part of the bag here was very difficult because I didn't let the yellow paint dry enough. So I had to go back in and clean it up afterwards, but that was no problem. So for a lot of paintings like this, I like to work in sections. So I did the top part of the bag, the beige color, did all the details there before moving on to the red part. And the last part that I worked on were the chips because I knew they were going to be very repetitive and I knew that they were going to be the most detailed part of the entire painting. So I did those at the last possible moment. So right here, before I even have the chips painted in, I'm doing the shadow and the darker red color around the chips, just so it's all completely done. And the only thing left to do is all the chip details. 
When it came to the chips on this bag, they are very similar in color to the top part of the bag. The main difference being they're far more warm toned yellow compared to the top where it's more of a sort of beige gray color. So whenever I painted the top part of the bag, all the shadows were basically a mix of my base Naples yellow, a little bit of white, a little bit of cadmium yellow that I mixed with a warm gray. So they were very warm toned gray shadows, whereas the shadows of the chips were more dynamic. There was green, I added in some bright brown colors, some some bright orange browns, some dark browns, but the gray part of the shadow was made with that green color compared to the top, which was made with a gray. I guess I should also mention the medium I used for this painting was oil paint. So because of that, it does take a couple days for it to dry. And this causes me to have to work sort of like a printing press where I work from the top down on the painting so that I'm not smudging or having to rest my hand on top of wet paint. So the very important thing for this one is I knew that the letters were gonna be a little bit challenging to do over the yellow paint if it were still wet. So I made sure to paint all of the details of the barn, of the top part of the bag first, and then I let it dry for a couple days to a week before I painted on the letters. For the letters, it was almost impossible for me to see my sketch I had done underneath, so I had to be very sure that I was going to have enough space to fit all of them. And one thing I recommend for painting letters, oftentimes people will run out of space as they're going across the piece, and everything on the right hand side tends to get a little cramped. So one thing I like to do is I like to actually start in the middle of the writing. So for this one, Miss Vicky's, I started by painting the Vicky's part first, and then I went back into the Miss afterwards. The only thing with this, because the paint is wet, it can lead to smudging. So you kind of have to weigh the benefits against the costs, I guess, of doing it. But this is just how I like to paint words so that I have enough space for everything. Each of these letters, by the way, had to be outlined in the base Naples yellow, sort of beige color, before I added in the additional red line. I didn't really film any of that, but I did put a little outline around all of the letters, which you can especially see, I find, around the I, E, apostrophe, S at the end. One thing about painting packaged foods like this is you really get an appreciation for the graphic design elements that come into designing food packaging. For me personally, after staring at the Miss Vicky's font and logo for so long, it is really sort of solidified itself in my brain as being truly iconic, even though it's just a chip name written out in a random font, just the shape of the M and the way that the one part of the M goes behind the S and then just the shape of the K. Everything about this logo to me is really smart because it's iconic and it hasn't changed in years as far as I know. And then, of course, you could probably tell because I'm painting Miss Vicky's chips to begin with, <laughs> but in Canada, we have labeling on our bags that are both English and French. So of course I had to rewrite original recipe in French. I think I could have done these letters a little more straight. They're much smaller than the English font, which is a big no-no, and they're kind of crooked and kind of smooshed together. To be honest, I feel like I ran out of space for the letters. I'm actually surprised I was able to get in four lines of text in this tiny space. So that's another thing I would change if I were to redo this painting. I would definitely give myself more space for both of the English and French chunks of the label on the front. 
Another thing about light and shadow that I'd like to add here is it's very infrequent in nature where we have true whites and true blacks for highlights and shadows. From this video here, it kind of looks like the edges of the chip bag where the red ends and it kind of goes very dark along the sides. It looks like I use black for those shadows, but trust me, <laughs> in real life, it is more of a brown purple color because that's what I use for the shadows. Same with this little salt bowl on the front of the bag behind the chips. It kind of looks like I use black at the bottom here on the wood part, but it is just very, very dark brown. So an important thing here is the only instance where I actually use a pure color. So in terms of pure white or pure black, I only use pure white on the salt in the little bowl on the front because the salt is super white on the front of this bag and it kind of just looks like a white blob. It has almost no detail because of how white it is because it's salt. So that is one other thing that I wanted to add. It is very rare that we have true white or true black in nature. So whenever you're painting, never reach for the white or the black just straight out of the tube whenever you're trying to add, let's say the pupils in someone's eyes, or you're trying to add the whites of somebody's eyes, especially the whites of someone's eyes. Unless you're going very cartoony, it is going to look strange if they have pure white eyes because actual humans have blues and reds in those eyes. So just one thing to keep in mind if you're a newer painter as well. Coming up to the end of the painting here, whenever I do the background, I didn't really film any of it, to be honest. For the background, I just did a cool gray color all over, and then I added a little bit of darker grays around the base of the chip bag and then sort of behind it. I didn't really make it accurate to if it was, let's say, in front of a gray wall with a strong light shining on it and a drastic shadow. I didn't really do anything like that. It was just sort of, here's a gray background because I wanted to draw attention to the actual bag of chips itself. And for my name, I cannot sign my name on paintings. I don't know why it always looks like hot garbage. So I painted it on and it looked like garbage. I painted over it and I did it with a pen and then I sort of traced the pen with paint and it still looked bad and I had to fill in some parts of the background color again. Anyways, this is my signature and let's get on to the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate the clicks and any likes, comments, or shares on this one. If you have any ideas for future paintings you'd like to see, just leave it down in the comments for me and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.